Uh, hi there everyone and uh, hi there everyone there out on YouTube as well. We are in the Agile office uh, and I'm going to demo a cool thing. I think it's cool. And this is my Agile colleagues uh, around me here. And uh, they are who make it possible for me to spend a day a week on open source. I'm so grateful. Hi, sorry for interrupting. Something unexpected happened after my presentation. It turned out that my Agile colleague Ole also had solved day one of Advent of Code in a very joyridish manner, but using Rust and his own presenter application, Rusty Slider, instead. It was pretty mind blowing, actually. Luckily, I had a sense to record the video, to record it. We have attached the recording to the end of this video, so please stay tuned after the joyride part. You don't want to miss the showdown, Closure versus Rust, or Joyride versus Rusty Slider might be a better description. Thank you. Today we are going to use Joyride, an extension for Visual Studio Code that creates a closure scripting environment so that you can hack VS Code like Emacs users can hack Emacs. We are going to use it for solving the day one problem of this year's advent of code. We are also going to use a template, uh, this template here, and uh, have it cloned on my computer that includes some utilities so that we can concentrate on the solutions rather on, on the infrastructures. To learn more about Joyride, you can check this little presentation out. Uh, and you can also check this presentation by me and Mikil Borkent, who created Joyride together with me. And the README of the template contains instructions for how to start this, for how to, what you need um, to bring with you, and it's just really VS Code, and what you need to install, and that is two extensions, Joyride and Kava. And you also need to make your browser session cookie from the AOC site available to the scripts. This is one way to do it. Yes, but I've done all that here. So we have Calva and we have Joyride installed. It's an update on it. You don't remember that one? Okay. And I also have my session cookie in this file, which I will not click <laughs> and show you. Um, okay, so I will not try to teach you any closure here, uh, nor Joyride really, and certainly not how to solve AOC problems. I got stuck on problem 14 last year, so you shouldn't get come to me for that. This will be purely a demo well, I'll try to make it possible to follow along and hopefully make it enjoyable for you. What you hopefully will walk away with is to know where you can start, have a vague idea what it will be like solving Advent of Code problems this way, and curiosity and hunger to start hacking VS Code and learning closure. So, let's uh, do this. I have done the stuff that the readme tells me, and it tells me to open this file, which is the day one problem file. And it also tells me to install Joyride and Calva, and then to start and connect the Joyride end REPL server. Never mind what an end REPL server is, but I will start it. There's a command for that in Calva. Start Joy is how we find it. There. The REPL is started, and further instructions here is to open the file util AOC, CLJS, and load it in the REPL, and it tells me here how to do it. So I will do that. Load a valid current file and its dependencies. Now that is loaded, you see that here. And then it also told me to load this file. So we'll do that as well. I use a sh keyboard shortcut for this time. Now this file is loaded. And then we should evaluate the top level forms of the rich comment form below in the order they appear. 
and it also tells us how to do that. Alt enter is the shortcut key you use for that. And this is a rich comment form. Uh, and the rich comment is just a name for it because we all love rich hickey. And but this, this comment is a macro that will evaluate to nothing when it is evaluated, which makes it totally safe to put any code in here. It won't be uh, run when we load the file with it in here. So nothing happened. Now we should start with initializing the, this advent of code today. It creates a status bar item, it says. Alt enter inside this form. The form is the top level form. You can see that because it's a blue parents around it. Alt enter. And now you can click the item to open the AOC site on day one. This item was created now. So I will click it. And it will take us to day one of advent of code. And here we can read about the problem we're going to solve. And yeah, lots of words here. But what it says is that we should count these groups, uh, the sum of these groups. So we should add 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 here, and we should add 4,000 here, and these two numbers here. And then we should output, the answer should be the, the largest sum uh, of this. So for this test data, it should start with this 24,000, because one of the groups is that large. So usually what you do is that you copy this data and bring it into your, into your code. I have done that here. So, But we also have on the AOC site is a way to download, download the input here from this. But this project, this template project that we're using contains this utilities for doing that. Uh, so if we evaluate this form, it will download my input that's special to me. And then we can look at this input by evaluating this. Control enter, you have instructions here for that as well. So it prints it here and it is much longer than this, but it's truncated in this output here. But here you can see these numbers and the needles you see are the empty lines. This, so I did, did the same with the test input here, which you also should evaluate. And then if everyone following along so far? Yes. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Uh, then it says to me that we should implement the solution here. Uh, can uh, someone bring me the cheat sheet I have there? I'm a bit too nervous to do real life coding. Um, okay. And so this is a function called part one. And here we have some code for testing that function. But it, it explicitly says that this is for A and this is for B. So we, we should not start implementing yet. We're testing the current implementation, which only takes the first number from the input. And that's probably wrong. And we can do it like this, 1,000. That was the first number from the test data. And, but we can also do it in a more fun way by evaluating this. Now this uh, item here was updated with the, with the answer. And it also offers me to copy this answer and open the day one again so I can paste it. Ho, 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 yeah. Yes, I wanna do that. So now it copied 1,000, open this uh, page again, and we could paste it here and submit. Uh, that was not the right answer, of course, like actually our template told us it probably was not. So now we should try to implement this. First input is wrong, and now it's very important that we're not going to learn closure here. Just Let's follow along. I just want to demo the feel and the mode here. So I will use a threading macro, thread last. 
and it will start with input and then that will be threaded. It's like a pipe on the command line through to the rest of the commands in this thread. And you might have seen over here, that I was looking at the documentation for part partition by, uh, which applies a function to each value in the collection and then splits the collection when this function returns true. And a function that returns true on nil, because we want to split this on these empty lines that are represented with nil here. So a function that returns nil, enclosure, uh, that is a function partition by, and you have the documentation here as well. Partition by, and we can say nil, this nil function here. Uh, okay, believe me, there it is. It returns true if x is nil. So now the input should be split on, on this. We will have groups like we want, want it to. So we have with that there. And now, if we would uh, test this output, we have the groups here. And we also get the group for nil with everyone. So it could be, be, could be problematic or maybe not. Now we want to sum these groups. Just so you know, you have a trademark there. Maybe you want it or not. Test input. Row 59. Row 59. Oh, I trademarked it. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't like IP. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's go. We will um, map this. Sorry, I'm, it's called map. We will map this uh, grouped uh, sequence uh, over a function. And I create the function here as partial apply plus. So this thread last macro will call this function and place the result of this here. So that is what, what, what it will map on. So it will map this function on this collection or this sequence. So that's what should happen here. So if we do that and test our output, we have now the groups here. We still have the nil because if you sum nil, you get nil. Uh, that, that's a thing in closure that uh, nil often is not the value of death. It's, uh, it's a friend. And what should we, yeah, we should have the the largest of these groups. And there's a function in Clojure. Clojure has a very rich core library. So it has functions for almost everything. There's a function called max. So if we apply that function over uh, uh, this collection, we should get out the largest number. So it should be this 24,000 that uh, the AC page told us, right? So we can check that. Yes, it is. And then we could update our button here. Uh, this is uh, uh, this script that is doing this. This is what's cool with Joyride. They can control VS Code and do anything in VS Code. Cool. Uh, should we try this on the real input? I didn't hear. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we do it on the real input, and it gives us uh, this output here, up and updates this. Should I uh, keep and copy to the clipboard and go to yes, please, let's do that. And now we go here and attempt this solution again. That's not the right answer. Hmm. Why not? I think I know. I think I know why. Um, okay, we will need to edit this away from the from the video later. I think I have the wrong cookie. Yeah, uh, I was say that you have the wrong input maybe. Yeah. So I will. This now we get the sort of a demo of what you need to do to get the right cookie. So now I was using the right answer for some other dude, also me. But anyway. 
Um, so we need to, I hope we can blur in some, like that. And it's not this, right? It's, but that's the same, isn't it? No, no maybe it's not. Now it's on the start, I didn't see the end. Thank you. All right. Uh, now we have another problem. It is that we are we are memoizing, memoizing the input here. So we will still get the old numbers if we would do it like this. So I think we will need to call this implementation that is not memoized um, to get the new, to like memoize new values. Okay, let's hope that worked. Um, close that. And then we need to do this again and fetch the output again. And we can look at the output and uh, look at this. This ends here. And last time, it's the same. We are starting with a fresh REPL. I need to start at the end, start join. And uh, load this file. And then load this file per, per this instruction, these instructions. And then set day one. Okay, set. That day one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going a bit quick here. Let's slow it down. That day one, we get the button back here. We read the input. And now it's different, right? No, it's right. Thank you, Christian. You saved me. Um, let's see if this was the um, problem then. We try this and implement this solution we had here and we check it should say 24,000 and now we do that on the real input and we have a new answer which we bring submit thank you thank you thank you so we have one gold star uh, but we can actually collect two per day right so we continue to part two and uh, yada yada elves um what the top three elves on the, with, mm, the boy the, uh, the elves would instead like to know the total calories by the top three elves so we need to sum do the same that we did sum it all up it's very common in you see that you have it. but then we should the top three elves, we should sum it up. So that's redundancy, I guess, for the elves. So let's. And note that it was how much of the top three carrying in total was the sort of question at the end there. Just good. Of it's very good. You're a teacher, right? Plus, I did this. It's very, very good <laughs> to answer the question, actually, when you do stuff like this. So uh, we have part two here. If we try that, now it takes the last one, the input this, this time. and. We get this answer, and we can we can trust it that it's wrong. Uh, so we instead implement this, and we said we sh should do roughly what we did here, right? So I copy that, and now if we would run test two here instead, we should get that. And if we do it on the real input, we get the same answer still. But now we shouldn't. Uh, uh, we shouldn't uh, calculate the max group in this step, but instead, what makes sense now is to sort it with the highest number. So if we would sort uh, here, and it will start with the lowest numbers. Uh, so uh, or rather the lowest sums here, right? Uh, so we need to sort it the other way, greater than. Sort takes a comparator. So we give it uh, that. And now if we test 
test our input here. It goes from largest. Uh, so that's good. And we should sum these three up. The top three. The top three. So why did you change the sort order? Was it just to make it a little bit easier in the next step? Or yes, so because I know something, I know something about closure. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it has, it has uh, um, a function called take. And you can give it a number. And it will take that many numbers from the sequence. From the top. From the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. from the start. I, was, I think about it as the start and end of this, this sequence. Uh, and if we have the other sort order, there is um, a function for getting the last item, but then it gets complicated to get the last three. Uh, so yeah, this is very easy to read. I sort it the other way around and take three of them. And now uh, we do the same as we did here. We apply the plus function here and do it like that. And we do it on our test input and we get 45,000, which is what we should get according to this. And we could, I think, reduce instead over the plus function and still get the same. But I think it. To me, it makes more sense that we are applying the plus function. So let's stick, stick with apply. And then if we do that on the real input, doesn't that look the same answer that we did before? Mm -hmm. But I think in theory, it could be the same. Um, actually, we have part one here. <laughs> That's why we need the same. Um, OK, I should need to fix that in the template. <laughs> um, OK. Thank you. So this is maybe the, the right answer. And now I copied it and did stuff like that. I don't need to. Joyride can help us with that. I just click here, and it copies it and goes here. And we paste. You Place your bets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah the two yeah. gold stars. Yes, so that's uh, what I wanted to show you. Let's do day two. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be really, uh, you would see the struggle. Um, okay, so any questions? So is there a way to get that, of a, the, the thing where it clicks you and, and sends you tablet code to automatically paste the clipboard and send you so you don't have to click leave or, or the green button? Because as soon as I click the status bar, in local. Is it like that? Don't show again in VS Exactly. So we have this function here that I made. Uh, uh, let's open AOC day. So it first does this, right? And uh, so this shows the, the message. I think we, we don't have these values here. But if we, we create those values for ourselves, I think. The reason I ask is these competitive advent of code guys and gay girls, they're going to want to save that couple of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, I see. Uh, now I, I uh, will um, we evaluate that and we evaluate that and we can but just check here if we, that's why this is, if we evaluate this, this that's why we get this thing here. And here is why it opens this ah, day. So we can, if we want, uh, uh, we we still we still need a thread here. Okay, and that can go. So now it should copy to the clipboard and then open uh, day one. So now if I evaluate this function and I press this button. It goes directly here. And that middle step we have there is an extension I have in Mac. So they can skip that one as well. Yes. And there you saw uh, an example of uh, uh, interactive coding. 
because this button already had this command, right? We changed the implementation. And without reloading anything, the button started to behave differently. You can actually do that particular thing because how VS Code works, but a lot of other things is closure unique, actually, to do. Yes, I know that there are people in here that are in a hurry to get away. So let's um, say goodbye to everyone from the Agile office. And uh, thank you very much for attending. What are you going to do all that? You're going to... Yeah, I'm going to show a presentation uh, done with the Rusty Slider that shows uh, the first day of Advent of Code 2022. And uh, I'm just standing here trying to... That doesn't in itself sound amazing, showing uh, a solution in the presentation, but we'll see yeah. if it is amazing. Maybe it's an amazing uh, solution. Yeah, and it's unrehearsed. Work. That's pretty amazing. Unrehearsed. <laughs> yeah. Slides. That Slides. was correct. Wow. Okay. okay. So there it is. We are seeing so it here. This is a presentation. Uh, we had Paris. <laughs> there in the corner. This so, is written in Rust and some game engine. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, uh, Rust and the game engine is called Macropod. Macropod. Okay. Uh, and the source so, for the slides is in Markdown or something like that? Yes, the source of the slides is in Markdown. Uh, and then there's just a JSON file for the theme. So you can have different kinds of themes uh, uh, without changing the Markdown. Cool. Uh, it's, it's like styling is in yeah, this sort. Okay. Styling mm -hmm. is separate from the content of mm -hmm. the slides. Mm -hmm. So I can show that just change a theme to rusty maybe it was the oh. same presentation with just another styling hmm. uh, so today I'm gonna show my solution for day one of uh, advent of code 2022 which is in rust uh, and it's a very simple solution uh, so you can laugh at my code if you want to. <laughs> ah, that's me. Awesome. <laughs> so one fun thing about Rust I learned yesterday, I said, is if you write C and you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. In Rust, if you are having fun, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> 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 so is there some, some truth yeah. to that? Yeah. I don't know. Or they really uh, seem to enjoy it. Maybe it's doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah kind of. Like, wow. <laughs> Uh, the thing with Rust is you kind of bash your head against the wall uh, for the until the compiler yeah. says everything's okay, and then everything just works. So okay. once you're friendly with the compiler, uh, things get better. The fun will come later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the profit. <laughs> uh, but the compiler kind of teaches you how to program. Yeah. In a way, because it's very, it's. Uh, very helpful. It tells you, you did this wrong because of this. So it shows you in every step why uh, why it doesn't work and how you should fix it. Mm. And then links to like a longer description of the problem. And eventually you learn how to code well uh, by just following uh, the recommendations by the compiler. And once you know how to code well, uh, you won't have as much problems with the compiler. And if... I don't know what fun is. <laughs> Maybe fun is... <laughs> You'll know it when you meet it, yeah. I can tell you. <laughs> it's like love. <laughs> so these solutions are made in the Rust programming language. And with Rusty Slider, you can execute uh, Example code uh, by hitting enter, provided that you have actually started it with the flag enable code execution. So here, so there's the code. Yeah. So there's the code. 
It's uh, really? is that a transition. I was do. that a transition you saw? Yeah, it's a transition. Yeah, nice. So it's a spiral transition yeah. between. Uh, it didn't look very good in this. <laughs> uh, looked like a little bit uh, big twenty uh, game. Yeah, like the early nineties TV channels. You know, <laughs> yeah, maybe. It looks I mean, better on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay, so now we have the code again. Yeah, so it's very simple. It's actually I've downloaded the code, uh, store it in a file, and then just uh, loop through them. And uh, yeah, so you did detect when you have an empty line, like near you, yeah, your example, exactly. and then you push it. Yeah, uh, uh, you could do a bit much better solution with uh, functional code uh, in Rust as well. Uh, but I just wanted it to. Uh, quick it's sort of much less code than I would. I have <laughs> had this idea that there's lots of. Uh, see, it is the, the 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 typing is very like inferred, I guess. Or yeah, it's yeah? very good. You don't see it types. really, right? Yeah. I, I haven't cool. written any types. Have I? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> haven't seen much Rust code in my Maybe life. Maybe the box yeah. thing. Is I have been afraid of all this typing, yeah. but then you don't have any. <laughs> yeah, this is a type. Oh, sorry. Uh, the result is type. The error is a type. So yeah. that's the return value of the main function. That's because I don't want to handle errors. So I just use the question mark, and then it just returns. It exits the program and prints the error. Ah. Um, All right. So, I mean, so I'm here's, I'm a, a, here's the type. There is a type. When I parse the lines in a string, so yeah. I parse it as an int. Ah, so that coerces okay. it uh, automatically for you. Yeah. Yeah. And if I can't parse it, it's uh, going to exit with a nice error message because mm -hmm. of this question mark. So you have nice error messages. Uh, we don't yeah. have that in Clojure. <laughs> 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 ah, cool. Yeah. Uh, but in Clojure, we have a REPL, though, so we could actually run this code in almost any an environment. Uh, I guess uh, Clojure has that. Rust, uh, because it's a compiled language. Yeah. But Rust Slider has support for executing some languages like Python, Ruby, Perl, I think. Okay. And also Rust. And also Rust. Okay. I thought you said. If you hit enter. Oh. Well, oh, that's a repo. Kind of. Almost, yeah. <laughs> Is that the right answer? I think so, yeah. Oh, my God. So it actually read that. We should make him try it, just like you have to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That was painful. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then I can go to the part two of day one. So it's a bit different, not very different. No. So this is kind of the, at the end here. Take, yes. take the three oh. last ones and sum them. Uh, I could actually do the, the whole parsing uh, more functional as well, but. Yeah, this takes too so, much time. It's I, I, I just have this re reflection a bit that that uh, it is much less code than I sort of was used to seeing. Like every other language is produces so much more code than I do when I do it in Clojure. But this is this is not like that, right? But one thing I think Clojure, Clojure wins for me here, maybe when I'm used to it, is that I on my solution I saw I saw the algorithm yeah. and, and yeah right uh, the, the solution was nothing else but the solution yeah. uh, so that is not as clear but it's also as i said i haven't looked at uh, much uh, rust code uh, yeah we didn't really have any variable names which sometimes a variable name i feel can be can be nice to kind of get a sort of an extraction abstraction yeah. but i think it's really hard to come up with variable names like the more it could be yeah it could be up, in this time in this case i use the like core closure core functions yeah. a very good name on them so, so it was more focused on what's happening with this thing yeah. rather than what is this thing like so, you didn't need yeah. to store mm -hmm. the calories you, just, you were just looking yeah. for a value in the end you never gave it a particular name no no, no. not for maybe in, in, in a real application, something needs to happen in the real yeah. world, but not here. I mean, Usually you define the name of the, the, the function, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, very cool, all that. This is, uh, I, I have maybe, I actually um, faked that I didn't know that this would happen. 
<laughs> but, but just I have to admit that. But I, actually, what I did was I entered this office this morning and uh, had this idea that I should demo my way of doing it with Joyride. And, and then I just uh, teased Ulla a bit that uh, <laughs> you can't do that with Rusty Slider. And <laughs> then, then he beat me to doing, to releasing his stuff before I released my Joyride stuff. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> because you're about to read these too, right? I mean, yeah. Just... yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe my was more work, but still, I mean, I, I, I started, I started doing my template yesterday when the kids had gone to sleep. So at nine somewhere, and then at two. I was sort of at a place where I can't finish this tomorrow. But I, what I'm saying is that I've been working, yeah, at least uh, at least eight hours mm -hmm. with my thing. And I think I've been, I don't know, Ulla, you, you did it in it, it was maybe I don't know. It was forty minutes or something like that. So that was that was amazing. You used an IDE, right? That, that too, uh, yeah. Well, so a lot, so much, <laughs> so much tooling, and here yeah, you can do it like this. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, uh, the awesome. Only thing you're missing is the wrapper now. As soon as you have the wrapper, huh. then you can just you can just finish yeah. time or joy or everything. So I can, I can't upload actually. I, I'm holding the phone. I can do it like this, and you guys can. I can upload myself. Yeah, you can. You should. You should.